Section 1.5 is all about different graphing techniques. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the functions that we can now identify the like most simplest version of. Quadratics, cubics, square root function, cube root function, identity function. All those things we learned in the last chapter. And we're going to learn how to move them around the coordinate plane. So now that we know the general shape of that functions take on, we should be able to graph um, most of these functions. So here's an identity function, right? This is a linear equation. They take the form y equals mx plus b, where b is your y-intercept. This should be a little bit of a review from college algebra. And my question is, what would I need to do to the equation of this function if I wanted to shift it up 3? Right now, my y-intercept is 0. But if I shifted it up 3, my y-intercept would be 3. I would have to add 3 to our original equation in order to shift this graph up 3. If I did that, we would get something that looks like this. Gosh, I can't draw a straight line to save my life. Okay, <laughs> next, let's talk about this. What would I need to do if I wanted to shift my graph down 4? Well, I would have to move my y-intercept down to here, right, at negative 4. I'd be subtracting 4. So my new function would be x minus 4. Okay, what have we deduced for ourselves? Okay, if I want to shift this function up, so vertically up 3, I need to add 3. And if I want to shift my function down, I would need to subtract. I wanted to shift it down 4, so I subtracted 4. This works for all functions. So if I'm given a real number k, and I add that to the equation of our function, it is shifted k units along the y-axis, so k units vertically. So our new function would be f of x plus k. So here, for example, I have a quadratic, and if we add some constant in a positive direction, it's going to be shifted up. So why don't we go ahead and graph the following and describe the shift. So here I have x cubed minus 2. Um, I know that x cubed's general shape is like one of these, right? That's what x cubed looks like. So if I was going to shift this down to, we should probably find some values, but I could just shift it down to. So when x is negative 1, y is um, negative 1 cubed minus 2, which is negative 3. When x is 0, y is negative 2. And when x is 1, y is 1 cubed minus 2, which is negative 1. As you can see, all of these points, the ones I could remember, shifted down 2. So now here's what our graph looks like, something like this. Find at least three points when you're graphing a uh, cubic. This was our cubic function, shifted down 2. Next, I've got the square root of x minus 3. So I remember our square root function, the basic square root function looks like this. Square root of 4 is 2. Looks like this, right? So I have when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1, because the square root of 1 is 1. And when x is 4, y is 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. If I want to shift this down, if I'm going to shift this 3, it's going to be shifted down 3. Each of those points is going to be shifted down 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So let's just verify that we did this correctly by finding some x and y values. So I have when x is 0, y is negative 3. When x is 1, I've got the square root of 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And when x is 4, y is the square root of 4 minus 3, which is negative 1. Let's make sure that's the case. Here I'm at when x is negative 3. Sorry, when x is 0, y is negative 3. Here I'm at when x is 1, y is negative 2. And here I'm at when x is 4, y is negative 1. So this is our graph of our radical 
square root function uh, shifted down 3.